Welcome. My name is Michelle Akberi Goharbin. I'm a relationship banker with California Bank and Trust. I've been invited by Bobak Khatiblu, Mr. Bobak Khatiblu, my dearest friend, whom I call Bobby. Welcome to NEPOC event. NEPOC stands for Network of Iranian American Professional in Orange County, just like yourself. It's been around since 1987. It's a wonderful organization and brings the community together and they have wonderful events, which literally we're gonna talk about them as we go. And um, tonight we're together to talk about SAT and ACT and all sort of great exams that our kids or grandkids or kids to be will face one day. I personally am in debt forever to Bobby since he helped my children to accomplish so much in a very short period of time. His guidance and mentorship has been tremendously um, character changing in my children. And I'm sure all of you will at some point experience that and you should. Even in your adulthood, if you're thinking about changing your career, or you have something that you want to do, an idea, and not sure, Sina is still walking. Have a seat, Sina. <laughs> you should definitely reach out to Bobby. He's the one who's always available, and he gives you the best of advice. And um, I am honored to um, be here tonight to introduce him. Uh, Bobby wrote me a little story about his bio, but this bio, doesn't do justice, Bobby, but I'll just read, as I have promised, make it short. Bobak Khatiblu was born and raised in Tehran. Bobak went through rigorous high school program in Iran and passed Konkur, the highly competitive college entrance exam. Bobak was expected, accepted to the Petroleum University of Technology in Abadan. That's, uh, that's very huge, Bobby. I know how incredible that place was graduated with a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. After moving to the United States, Bobak graduated with a master's in industrial engineering from Columbia University. Afterwards, he moved from New York to Southern California and has been working uh, for various companies. And at the same time, he's been tutoring math forever, as long as I know him. I'm only 10 years old. He has moved, <laughs> he has more than 20 years of experience in tutoring math. He has conducted SAT preparation courses in class and private tutoring format for years. The last but not the least, he has been an active member of NEPOC and its career committee since 1991. Without further ado, Mr. Bobak Khatiblu. Yes. Okay, thank you, Michelle. And thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. The story of college entrance exams are, I guess we all went through it at one time, and our kids are going to go through it at their time. In Asian countries, Iran, Korea, Japan, it's a big deal. It's life and, I don't want to say death, but you know, it's a, if you don't get into college, you know, your life changes. Here is not that critical, but it's important. Uh, because you have the option of going to the community college and then transferring out, which it's not a bad option. Some parents would like the, their student to go to a four-year university, and four-year universities typically require SAT and ACT, or ACT. So, even if your child is not sure and may go the community route, I think it's a good idea to take the test anyways. 
and apply and then make a final decision. That's my general advice. Uh, the question is, when is the best time to take it? When they finish the sophomore year and they go into junior year, sometime in junior year is when most students take the SATs. They can also take it early senior year. Nowadays, they started with an August testing. So you take it in August, in six weeks, you have your test result, and still you can attach it to your application in your senior year. But that's kind of a, August, November would be, August, November of senior year would be kind of the last one, kind of. And you can take it more than one time. That's the good thing. So what, for those of us who haven't taken it, the question is, what does it include? Uh, basically English and math. As simple as that. However, the English is college level uh, reading and writing, which I will have my colleague Claudia go over detail of English. And the math is algebra and geometry, nothing fancy. However, unlike the state testing and school testing, that their interest is to find out how much you learned, here is the, in the focus is how much you missed and what is the detail that you didn't really get. They're trying to get you. Long story short, they want to get you there. They're, they're, they're not there to praise you, oh, you've done very well in high school. No, that's not the plan. Uh, SAT has been the major, uh, is administered by college board since 1899. I have to look it up. I couldn't believe it. More than 100 years they've been doing this. And the thing with SAT is if you miss an answer, if you select the wrong choice, there's a penalty involved. So you have to be careful. So they will get you, they're trying to get you. That's their purpose. ACT is their competitor, administered by company ACT. They're a nonprofit as well. They have a flair of science part of their testing as well. So it's math, English, and a bit of science. Their level is higher. You require algebra two, maybe pre-calc, because they were gonna have some tricky questions, trigonometry, logarithms, so higher level. Their questions are real math, in terms of math. Their questions is real math problem. If you get a problem, you have to solve. There's no trick involved. You just have to do the work. It's very standard kind of problem. So you better be fast to it in the amount of time. Uh, so the question becomes, typical questions, which one should they take? People have written books and articles my answer is take both. Don't sweat it, take both. Take both, see which one you do better. Submit that score. Because they are convertible. The good news is a certain amount, of, like 36 on ACT is 1600 on SAT. They convert for every, so you can easily convert. Most schools accept ACTs. So do both if you done better on ACT, use that one. Then it becomes how to prepare for it. Uh, first thing is, especially if your children are not at the junior level yet, have them read. Read books constantly. Reading is going to be the best thing because English has a, if they take the written, the essay portion has a bigger weight than math. It's like a little bit more English. It used to be two, two to one. Now it's kind of less, but English is more important. So reading becomes paramount. And you cannot become master in one night. It's not something, it's not the kind of test you can, the night before the test, study and do well. No. It goes by what you've learned. Skills that you have picked, the depth of understanding you have gained. That's how they measure, that's their specialty. So reading, I've seen students 
the way that we do reading here is until third grade, the teachers are very strict, and after that, once the kid starts reading, it kind of becomes optional. It's not a mandatory thing. Uh, people who like and keep reading, they do far better in SATs. Far better. So, all those novels, which I didn't think much of it, comes handy. Just keep reading, keep reading. Journals, newspaper, it doesn't matter, read. Uh, now, what are we going to do about math? Well, for the earlier years, Typical books have, at the end of the chapter, they have a chapter test that comes handy for the school, and then they have a standardized testing, multiple choice, because both these tests are multiple choice. And I suggest uh, have the students get into the habit of doing the multiple choice, doing the, they say standardized college testing. Do that section as well. Uh, let's say, your student comes to close to 11th grade, and then how are you going to prepare? Whatever reading they have done, fine. Should they go to classes, SAT prep classes? And this is a wide open question, in my opinion. If a student is very motivated, they can take one of the books and read it themselves. 1% are like that. Then, uh, Erma Unified offers SAT classes, summer school. They can take that. They're not too bad. They're not too motivated. Again, if the student is highly motivated, they can benefit from it. Otherwise, they're going to go along and learn a little bit. My daughter took it. It wasn't too bad, but... Other private uh, classes and private tutoring are also available. And they vary from what they cover, how much they cover, how long, how many hours they offer, and what they cover. But typically, they cover a bit of strategy, test-taking strategy, they cover the subject matter, and they, they administer tests, practice tests. The degree varies. I've been doing SAT classes. My emphasis is mostly subject matter. Because I found out that students forget. They take like, they start Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Pre-Cap. They come to that level. And then when I go over the SAT, basic SAT material, which starts from like very basic, there are holes, there are gaps, there are things they haven't really paid too much attention. So in a way, an SAT review class is good to kind of refresh, review what they have learned and get them a very good foundation for the next step in college. So I think it's not a bad investment. Most kids need it. They can benefit from it. That's, that's the minimum I can say. Uh, let me bring Claudia here. She is my colleague, she does English, and to give you a little bit of her background, she got her BA at Berkeley, UC Berkeley, and her master's at UCI. And she's been, the good thing about her, she worked a couple of years, 10 years, 8 years in corporate world, which brings life. She's not just a teacher, she's been out there. She, you know, she knows the subject. She's done editing and for companies and all that. And then she went into teaching, uh, community college level mostly, and uh, she loves it. My, I always have to say, don't work too hard. Anyway, let's have her give us a couple of minutes of what's involved in the English portion. Claudia Jarrett, please come. introduction, Babak. I appreciate it. I'm Claudia Jarrah. I'll give you a bit of my vocational and educational background. I've been teaching college English for the past nine years. I currently teach at Golden West College in Huntington Beach. I teach composition and literature there. 
I also do editorial work, as Bob Beck mentioned. I spent 10 years in the corporate world. I worked as an editor and writer for Washington Mutual and Deloitte Consulting, so I have that background to draw from. Uh, I also do uh, tutoring, of course. I tutor all ages. I tutor academic writing, and of course, I conduct SAT prep, one-on-one -on -one and in classes. And uh, as he said, I am a graduate of Berkeley and of UCI. I'm very proud of my alma maters. Thank you. <laughs> now, back when I applied to schools, we had to take the SAT and the ACT and the ACH, the achievement tests. So it's changed quite a bit. <laughs> um, so I will introduce to you the English portion of the exam. And I'll speak a bit about them in order. So first we have um, the reading portion, and that tests one's comprehension. So the, the test is going to be testing how quickly students can read a passage and comprehend it. And students will also have to do things like determine the author's main purpose, determine uh, what a word in context means, what the, um, the general idea of the main passage is, and be able to pinpoint information on graphs and charts. And so I don't really teach subject matter when it comes to the reading portion because you aren't really able to bring that to this portion of the test. But what I do do is I make sure that I teach them strategy. So for that portion, the reading portion, I try to teach them how to eliminate the wrong answers because it's very difficult sometimes to come to a test and know exactly what the right answer is because they all look right, right. So I teach them how to eliminate the wrong answers first to arrive at that right answer. Okay. Um, I also teach them how to identify questions that are the easier ones and the harder ones because I want them to do the easier questions first and build their confidence. And the more questions they can answer that are easy, the better, able to, the better able they are to answer the difficult questions on that portion, the reading portion. So it's a um, combination of instruction and strategy for the reading test. Now the second portion of the English test is the writing and language test. And for that I do, uh, again, both instruction and strategy. What the uh, section tests is your knowledge of grammatical and stylistic topics. So I do a grand review of the grammar rules and the punctuation rules. But what I don't do is cover every single rule because with the SAT, they test only certain rules that I am aware of. And so I don't waste time on things that aren't going to be on the test to maximize our time, right? So I do that and um, I also teach them uh, strategy, how to, how to take the test, how to eliminate the answers that are wrong first. However, with this portion, all the answers might be right. It's kind of an unusual part of the test. So with the writing and language portion, there are actually answers. Uh, there could be a question that features four right answers. And it's the student's objective to select the answer that is the most right. <laughs> so being very, very tricky on this portion. So I, I teach students um, not only how, do I, how to um, punctuate correctly, use proper grammar, which you will need for this section, but I teach them also how to identify um, the right choices. So I tell them that the right, the most right answer choices will involve three things, which are consistency, precision, and concision and they get practice identifying those three aspects in the right answers. So that's where a lot of strategy comes into play. It's not just instruction, it's, it's a little of both, right? The last section is the essay, which is separate from the math and English portion. And the essay is referred to now as being optional. It's the optional essay. But for me, I tell my students, it's not optional for you. <laughs> Because all of your um, all of your peers will be taking the the essay as well. They'll be writing the essay. It is optional in the sense that some colleges, yes, do not require the essay. So, for instance, Harvard does require it, but Brown does not. It's very interesting. I'm not really sure what the criteria is. I would say make that decision 
but that's how it is. Um, as far as I know, most of the UCs do require it. Half of the Cal States require it. Stanford certainly does. So, but even if it's not required, you must take it to be competitive with your peers, right? Um, it's a different essay than was featured in the old SATs. Some of you might know the SAT was revised in March of last year. So a lot of things changed on that, and the essay changed too. Before, they would give you a very short prompt, and if you write a response to that, maybe they would feature a quote from a, a famous you know, politician or persona in history. You'd have to write from your own experience and what you'd read about this particular quotation having application in your own life. Now it's very different. They give you um, a speech or an editorial that you have to read quickly, and you must determine exactly how effectively that author builds his argument. So there are actually three scores attached to the essay portion. There is a reading score, there is a writing score, and there's an analysis score. So your students, the students are going to be tested on all of those three things. So it's up to me to teach students, number one, how to read the passage effectively, how to comprehend it quickly. Number two, how to analyze it critically, because authors and speech makers, they use certain uh, stylistic and literary devices to make their arguments more compelling. And I teach students how to um, identify all those in a speech. And the third thing I teach them is how to write clearly. If I could teach my students in college one skill, it would be how to write clearly. So that's, I guess that's been lacking in education for the past maybe couple of decades. And I, I try to take that on as one of my missions as an instructor in college. And you have to be a, a, um, an effective thinker, a critical thinker, a clear thinker, in order to write clearly. And so what I tell um, some of the parents of my SAT students is if you have, if you have children who maybe um, are not old enough yet to take the SAT, have them do as Bob Beck suggests and read, read, read. If you read, you'll be better able to succeed on the SAT, actually. And I recommend that students read things that are high quality literature. So, you know, not just going on Facebook and text, you know, reading a text your friends send you, that is reading, but it's not high quality. So you want to be reading classic novels, um, you want to be reading magazines that uh, speak to today's issues. I love the Wall Street Journal myself, but that might be kind of tedious reading for a youngster. So at least have them read the classic novels. They build focus, they increase their vocabulary, and they also build reading comprehension. And all those three things come into play on the reading portion of the SAT. They also are able to get grammar rules and punctuation rules reinforced, which helps them on the writing and language portion of the SAT. And thirdly, they get exposed to high quality writing. And so the more writing they're exposed to through reading, the better able they are to replicate that in their own writing. So that helps them on the essay portion. So all these things, uh, reading kind of works in conjunction to help students, not just to be better, better writers in, in school and in their own lives, but yes, to be better um, competitors when it comes to the SAT. So but that is absolutely right on that. So my approach really is one of both instruction and strategy and of course, encouragement to all my students. Yes? My question is that, first of all, uh, how long is the test for either one of them, the English portion and the uh, math portion? How much time they give the student? Second question is that how often they change the book for the following students for the years? Right. So, right, exactly. Okay, so your questions were, number one, about... Right. So the SAT is a four-hour exam, around four hours. You do get breaks in between the main sections. So you take your English, I believe it's English and math, and you get a break, and then you take your essay. So with all the breaks, 
kind of worked in, it's four hours, a little over four hours. The whole thing. It's gonna take your, your entire Saturday morning. <laughs> yes, it will, yes. And as far as how often they update the SAT books, I believe it's one to two years. They come out with a new edition. So you have many different um, publishers that put out books to help students with the SAT. Princeton Review, Barron's, um, Kaplan, there are many out there. And so as far as I know, it's every one to two years. It's a little bit different now because they updated the exam in March of last year. So there aren't a ton of books around this. So it's up to instructors like Bob Beck and me to be very current on what they're testing, which we are. <laughs> yeah, I actually have, I've done a lot of research on the SAT, the new SAT, how things are being um, graded, how they're being assessed. And so I kind of draw my strategy from, of course, just my own knowledge of the test. And it's like, try to take the best strategy from all of the publishers out there. And there are many, and I kind of you know scour the books and see, okay, this I think works well, this does not, because I've tried it on other students, it didn't seem to work as well. So my technique hopefully is very refined on this. Is a 1600. So the highest you can score on math is, is 800. And your friend over there, uh, her daughter scored a perfect score on the math. Congratulations. <laughs> That's quite an accomplishment. So 800 on math, 800 on the on the English portion, and then the essay or the essay. The highest you can get on each of those three little things that they assess you on is an eight. You have three different people. Sorry, you have two different people who read your essay and then they provide the score, and the score gets averaged. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions about the English portion or the essay portion that I can answer for you? Yes? Um, can adults also use your services as part of their um, corporational writing and editing yeah. and speeches? Absolutely. I actually, my first love is editing. <laughs> I wrote for 10 years in the corporate world. I also edited, but I, I really enjoy editing almost as much as teaching. So I have quite the background in editing, but yes, absolutely adults can use my services. Yes. Whether it's uh, speech writing or editing or I'm um, just, you know, writing corporate material. I, I worked um, in corporate communications writing and editing a wide variety of communications. So I'm, I'm used to pretty much whatever you want to throw at me, I've, I've been able to do it. So absolutely, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Going over the events that's coming up, there are two other events, uh, NEPOC events that are coming up. Uh, I'm going to go in the reverse order. Uh, June 29th, we have a resume writing and interview skills. You can look at the website uh, for the address and information. The next week, we have a big event coming, and I would like uh, Majid to come and elaborate on it. It's a very interesting event. Uh, I think for the year, it's going to be one of the kind. Yes. Majid is our president. Thank you, Babarak. This was a wonderful speech about SAT and ACT. I wish we had this when we were in high school. <laughs> but back then, we didn't have any of these programs. Um, next week, we have a special event for NEPOC. It's, uh, I'm, I don't know how many of you have heard the movie The American Wrestler. Has anybody heard about it? Not too many of you, huh? American Wrestler. It's, it's about the story of a teenage uh, a kid that came from Iran, a teenager that came from Iran, when the revolution happened in Iran, and Iran started the war with Iraq, and uh, he came to America to go to high school. Essentially, he escaped from Iran, somehow he, he had to go to the war, and somehow he ran away from that and came here to go to high school. And uh, some of you that are old enough can remember that back then in 1979, when this was happening, there was a lot of turmoil and a lot of demonstrations in Iran, and uh, these fanatics that essentially took over Iran, they were burning uh, US flags, they were uh, chanting death to America, and shortly after the revolution, they took over the embassy, the US embassy, and took hostages. 
So this was the time that this kid came here and went to high school. So you should imagine that being from Iran, how much hostility he faced going to high school and how many challenges he had. You know, he was running away from that nightmare and he came here and he faced another nightmare. This is a great movie made by Warner Brothers. Uh, I, I saw the movie, it's incredible. And uh, so what this kid decides to do, he joins the wrestling team. And then he eventually was good and his uncle was a wrestler, uh, showed him some tricks and he became successful and he made it all the way to the state championship. Uh, we have asked uh, this, this character, his name is Ali Afshar. He's gonna be our guest Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at Hotel Irvine. He also played in the movie uh, the role of his uncle who helped him to become a good wrestler. Uh, a few of the cast members of the movie are coming. Uh, the executive producer of this movie, uh, Mr. Forrest Lucas, who is a uh, white American in the Midwest from Indiana who paid for this entire movie. He's going to be our guest and we actually today will receive the approval from Warner Brothers to show the movie. Up to today, we didn't have this approval, so we're gonna show the movie as one. Well. It's going to be an incredible event. A lot of celebrities are coming. The, um, Andy and Shaney are coming. Uh, Dr. Holakwi said he may show up. Uh, Jimmy Delshaw, the ex-mayor of Beverly Hills, he said he's going to come with a proclamation from City of LA uh, for Forrest Lucas and Ali Afshar for this movie. So I want to make sure that you all, if you can, come to this event. It's going to be an incredible event uh, for New Park. Probably will expect about 150 to 200 people. And I hope to see you all there. Thank you. Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday, June 6, 6, 6. Look at that. Ticket? Uh, I, I, I cannot operate. If, if you are a Nipok member or SPG member, the tickets are $45. We serve appetizers, uh, finger food, uh, and if you get to meet and greet with all these uh, people from Hollywood, there's a couple of people that are coming from Warner Brothers. John uh, Boyd? John Boyd was supposed to come. Yesterday he canceled. They are doing a sequel to this movie, and John Boyd, I think he's shooting the next movie, so he won't be able to come. Uh, but uh, Christina Moore, who played in the movie, is coming. Uh, there's a couple of Persian characters that played in the movie, they're coming. Uh, of course, Ali Afshar was a character who, this was his life story, he is coming, so. And he also played in the movie. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's gonna be a fun night. We have a red carpet, uh, Ceremony and uh, uh, what sort of popcorn to it? Why are you watching the movie? Uh, uh, Hotel Irvine has a popcorn machine, and we're going to set that up right in front of the ballroom and we'll serve popcorn. So. But we serve all kinds of uh, finger food and appetizers. It's, it's a great event. Uh, some of you may, may talk about the cost of this thing. Just remember, this being in Hotel Irvine. We get charged almost $30 per person to buy hotel airline, and that does not include anything. It does not include any food or drinks or anything. So uh, our cost is, is high. But it's, it's a special screening, it's a private screening. You get to meet and meet with a lot of people from an hour. Well, uh, if there is no questions, we can conclude here. Remember to network, this is what we do anyways. I'll be here uh, another 15 minutes, 20 minutes if anybody has questions. I actually have one more request for those of you that are planning to come or are thinking about coming or are interested. Help us out in promoting or spreading the news. If you are on Facebook, we have created an event called American Wrestler Appreciation Night. If you search for that on Facebook, either put interested or share it or if you're coming, join, invite a few friends. That would help us. Can you pay online? You can buy, you can buy your tickets at nipop.org, N-I-P-O-C, nipop.org. And if the companies that, there are a few, four, five, six companies that have purchased,
Squat per table. Squat per table means 10 seats. That is only $400. So you save quite a bit if you purchase a quart per table. Like, like people that work for Anaheim and say this, they can purchase a quart per table for you. say this at Anaheim. How about the staff? The Mercedes will not be included, but uh, the actual car will not be included, but they can get the table. Okay, thank you very much, and that's it.